Okay, so my name is David Majur. I'm a I'm a cardiologist, um, and I specialize in, in heart failure, um, and even something that's called advanced heart failure. So people needing needing heart transplants or or artificial heart pumps, but ideally that would never be a necessity. And what I'm here today to talk to you about is to try to break down some of these terms and concepts just to make it a little bit easier to, to grasp a hold. Um, and in case either of you or your family members or someone you know might be suffering from some of these conditions that you just have a, a little bit more knowledge about it so that you can, like I say, make sense of it all. Because all this can be quite confusing at times. And and it takes uh, reviewing what's going on quite a bit in order to really fix it in your head and, and to take control of it. So I'm going to share my... These are probably the four most common causes of things that can lead to heart failure. And high blood pressure is by far the, the most common, especially in African-Americans. In the United States, there are more people and more African-Americans with high blood pressure than anywhere else in the world. And it's one of the most common causes of heart failure over time. The problem with high blood pressure is you don't feel it. You don't, you know, some people might say, oh, I've got a headache because my blood pressure is high. But truthfully, you can live for years and years and years with really high blood pressure and not feel a thing. And it's not until something goes wrong that you really notice that you have it. So that's why it's extremely important to make sure that your blood pressure is well monitored and well controlled so that before you even develop some of the things that we're talking about, that the blood pressure is controlled so that you don't have the problem to begin with. Also, the longer you've had high blood pressure, the harder it is to control. Because what can happen is the blood vessels get tight, they get constricted. And then when we try to lower the blood pressure, you might feel bad because you've been used to having a really high blood pressure for a long time. So the faster you gain control of that, the better off you're likely to feel and the less likely you're gonna have problems related to high blood pressure to begin with. Coronary artery disease I also spoke about, it also is a, is a very common cause of heart failure, um, especially due to heart attacks. And probably one of the biggest things that can lead to that is, is cigarette smoking. Obviously that's become better, less people are smoking these days than they were in the past. But obviously, um, stopping cigarette smoking is extremely important. Diabetes, and I know you all all know about diabetes um, and, and how it can impact not just your heart, but your kidneys, your brain, your whole body. And diabetes leads to both high blood pressure and coronary artery disease. So making sure that diabetes, if you have it, is well controlled is extremely important to preventing the development of heart failure. Obesity, which is also a scourge um, throughout the United States, states and something that is affecting um, more and more our populations, something that, that really has to be prevented. One of the challenges is that once obesity sets in, it's very difficult to reverse in the absence of surgery. And bariatric surgery is something that more and more we're using. And the truth is, is that if the weight can be lost, whether through control measures on your own or uh, through surgery, the diabetes that follows along with it can be cured. And it's one of the very satisfying things that we see is that when you have successful control of obesity, say with things like bariatric surgery, sometimes the diabetes itself goes away. I bring those up because they're just super important contributors to the development of heart failure and things that potentially can be prevented if you're proactive enough to begin with. The office number is, um, is 646 9625555 um you know certainly happy to to take any sort of questions or even you know if if cornell is not uh, uh, helpful for you in terms of location we certainly have people in queens and in brooklyn um and uh at, at columbia there's a variety of people that we can get you in touch with um but happy to help out anybody with any questions they might have um and i and i really Thank you guys for letting me talk to you all day. I hope this has been helpful. It's a pleasure talking to you all. And honestly, I, I like doing this more than anything because it's just helpful to help people uh, hopefully prevent disease, you know? Can you get that number one more time? Oh, yeah, sure, sure, sure. It's 646-962-5555. Uh, and that's what it's Carolyn. We can, like, we can send it out for sure.
<laughs> okay, great. All right. Well, everyone Thank is off. So we're just going to give you a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Welcome. My name is Dr. Nosolo Teddy. I am the creator and director of the Heart Smarts program at New York Presbyterian Hospital. And thank you so much for making the time to be with us this evening. I know you are extremely busy um, and you have limited time this evening, but um, we are just so grateful uh, that you wrote this book. <laughs> and I have my two copies here because I've just been giving them out to everybody because um, they're just so amazing. Um, and so I want to definitely thank Rachel um, for setting this up. We have been trying to get you um, since December. And so um, it actually worked out perfectly because now this is February Heart Month. And so it was better than if we had you in December. So thank you again for being here. Um, would you like to give us a short synopsis about the book before we begin? Yes, yes. And and I want to thank you because uh, you come in the spirit of Du Bois. Du Bois told us that our uh, Black uh, grandmothers, grandfathers, we need to all sacrifice so that we can create this talented 10 percent that we will respond to Lou Rawls's, Rawls's voice and send money to the Negro College Fund, that we will lift up these young, smart, bright people that will go off and then come back and use their talents uh, to help the communities that they love. And you are symbolic of that. And I really want to thank you for bringing together uh, over 100 people and engage in the conversation about health and using my book or whatever tools, you know, you don't have to do this. You're doing it not for profit, profit, but you're doing it for purpose. And, you know, you are my hero and I wanna thank you for that. Oh, thank you. We are not crying. That wasn't a plan <laughs> on this call tonight, but thank you. And I, I received that. And this book is, this book is so much. Um, I think that I'm watching my mother inject herself with insulin. Mommy has six children. She loves them all, but she adores me. I'm her favorite child. And I watched her inject herself with insulin that day. Little did I know as I sat in the driveway of her house and said, God, I wish I could do something for mommy. She's taking nine pills. She's injecting herself with insulin. And I, I don't know a day when mommy was not in pain all the time, even when she was going to clean houses for other people in her arthritic state, she just made it happen and she just sacrificed. And, you know, you have to be careful what you ask God for because uh, he will answer. And that's what happened when, as the book indicated, when I was told I was diabetic. But out of that dark place, I was not buried, I was planted. And in every page of the book, you're seeing the fruits of that harvest. And all I want is not to have you beat yourselves up and say, I'm failing or what I could have or should have done. That is just not what this journey is about. I want you just to take the book. It may sit on your countertop. It may sit on a table, coffee table. And someone is just going to walk in one day and, and they're going to be told about a terrible diagnosis and they're going to thumb through the book and it's going to become a beacon of hope. Or you may be at a place right now where someone is telling you that you are about to go into dialysis or you are going to be on drugs the rest of your life, that you have heart problems, which is the leading killer of black women. Or you may be at a place where people are telling you there's nothing you could do for your health. And you may read through the book and realize that there's a lot you can do. God meant for us to be fruitful and multiply, not toxic and die. Mm -hmm. And it's not about immortality. It's not saying that you live forever. But living is not existing. It's not just waiting around to transition. It's about enjoy, enjoying your grandchildren. It's about enjoying uh, the people in your life. It's about being able to move around. And trust me when I tell you, no matter what health condition you are in, if you change your lifestyle, 
you are going to see improvements that you thought were unimaginable. Plain and simple, you will see changes. The person you want to be is inside you, waiting to come out. You just have to get out of its way three times a day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It is not in your DNA, it's in your dinner. And once you break free of that, you are finally saying to the history of slavery that you are now free and not bounded to those things of the past. And so I thank you for allowing me to speak with you. No matter how busy my day is, I will always take time and share with you how important it is that we save our families. Chronic diseases hijack your life. You're no longer who you are. You're thinking about the next test, the next operation. Do I have to go to dialysis? What is my life going to be about? I want to free you from that. That's what that book is about. I'm not making one dollar from that book. Every dollar is going to health ministries so we can empower our religious institutions to give us the spiritual guidance that we need. And we can pray on this, meditate on this, and finally free ourselves from the life of chronic diseases. So again, thank you so much for allowing me to come on. Thank you. Wonderful. And so when you become the next mayor <laughs> of New York City, we would love to be included in anything that you're doing um, regarding health. And again, the name of the program is Heart Smarts. And we are right along with you on this movement um, to having more people become plant-based. And so in the one minute that we have left, you have 110 people on here who belong to all the churches and organizations, New York City. What do you want to tell them about your run for mayor? Well, first, I want to make sure we, we team up with you so we can do some projects together. Uh, and it's, it's really about uh, turning around our city. Our city is dysfunctional. Uh, we create our crises. And my goal as the mayor is to stop this dysfunctionality. And at the heart of our dysfunctionality is that our, our, our unwillingness to go to the core of what our problem is. That's our health and hospital corporation should give you the option. If you want to do metformin and insulin and statin, you have a right to do that. But if you want to do lifestyle medicine, reverse diseases, you should have the right and the option to do that. Our children should have an option of the educational systems that we are doing, are giving them to make sure that we can deal with the issue that 65% of black children don't meet proficiency in school. It's unacceptable. When you look at the number of people who don't have high-speed broadband and Wi-Fi, uh, they're black and brown people. When you look at those who are incarcerated, 30% of them are dyslexic. We could have prevented that incarceration if we would have screened for dyslexia earlier. Archbishop Desmond Tutu has a quote that I live with. We spend a lifetime pulling people out of the river instead of going upstream and preventing them from falling in in the first place. I want to take our city upstream. I want to prevent you from falling in the river of crime, homelessness, healthcare crisis, lack of education, financial awareness. I want to upstream government because if you're downstream, you know what happens? You lose some of the people by the time they get downstream, they drown. The only way you prevent them from drowning is not allowing them to fall in the river in the first place. I'm stopping people. Yeah, that note, Rachel says you have to go. <laughs> I just want to all give you um, a round of applause if they can unmute. And thank you, thank you so much um, for writing this book. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Get my vote. Thank you. 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 Thank you.